when Jesus came on hand, see, they was thinking that he was going to, you know, take down the kingdom that existed at that present time, which was, they was up under the rule, the, the rule and the reign of Rome. But that was not a true statement. Jesus came to establish a kingdom that could not be taken down by man. And see, and this is the kingdom men are born into. You see in, in the uh, Matthew 4, the Gospel of Matthew 4, 23, it says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, he says, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel. The good news. See, that's what gospel means. The good news of the kingdom. See, and once you're born into the kingdom, whether you realize it or not, you have benefits. There's benefits that you have as being born into the kingdom. But like in any kingdom, see, that a person or a child is born into, they have to grow up. They have to meet mature. They have to be under the tutors. They have to be under teachers to learn who they are and, and who got and who the king is and the authority that they have in that realm that they might that they might rule and reign according. According to who they are in the kingdom. And also, when we look at the new birth experience, you need to understand that, that once you're born again, we're talking about you becoming a new person. See, once they told me I was born again, see, I kind of like missed it. I'm going to show you why I missed it. Because, see, I always thought that I was, uh, this body was me. But, see, we are a three-part person. We, first of all, we have, we are a spirit. We have a soul, and we live in this body. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, let me see what that says in reference to the new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You need to understand the only thing that became new once you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, once you experienced that new birth experience was the spirit man. See, because you still have that same body and you're still operating with that same mindset. That's why it tells us over here in, in, in the gospel, this is why individuals never ever grow up. Over here, in, the, in, 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 in not in Romans, one of the letters that Paul wrote to the Romans, which he's, he, he indicates over here in Romans uh, 12, I'm going to read 1 and 2. He says, I beseech you, therefore, uh, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present. He's, listen, present, that you present your bodies. Well, what? A living sacrifice, holy and acceptable God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, what? By the renewing of your mind. See, it's only through the renewing of your mind you're going to be able to prove who you are in that new birth experience. See, it's only through the renewing of your mind that you're going to have an understanding of who the master is. See, you have to remove, renew your mind. He says you'll be able to prove it for yourself. You won't have to ask your pastor. You can look in here, look at the word. The word will indicate to you what is necessary. He says, whatever you need to know, you, can need to, you will find out by way of scripture here. See, God, whatever God does, he does in accordance to his word. If he's going to do whatever, or however, whenever, he's going to do it with his word because he is his word. But he says he don't want you to be conformed to the world, to what, to what they think how they feel. But he says he wants us to be transformed, totally changed. And it, that's going to happen by renewing our mind. And the only way that you can renew your mind, notice he didn't say change your mind. He says renew your mind. The only way you're going to be able to renew your mind is by the washing and water of this word right here. And then he says you're going to be able to prove what is that good, acceptable, and, and perfect will of God is for you. See, so it's important to understand, see, the world has a definition of what the new birth experience is, and God has set forth his word which is truth. It says the law came by Moses. He says, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So, so if you want to know what the truth is about the new birth experience, then you need to get in God's word. I would, you know, I go to convalescent uh, uh, centers and, 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 and minister to those there. And I asked the question, I said, uh, how, how do you know? Because a lot of people have uh, different definitions of the new birth experience of how it actually happens. And so I asked a group of individuals, I said, well, I said, how do you, how do, how do you people know that you're saved? And they said, then this one lady, you know, she was about 80 or whatever, but she didn't, she, she didn't answer according to scripture. And, you know, and I'm not saying it's not 
you're not supposed to be baptized. All I'm saying is that that is not the new birth experience. But her answer was, she says, well, I got baptized in the Red River in Arkansas when I was eight. I said, well, lady, you didn't get saved. You just got wet. I said, because that doesn't save you. See, what saves you is doing what God tells you, or that new birth experience that, that it takes place, doing what God tells you in, in accordance to his word. God does not work outside of his word. Whatever he does, it's going to be in the confines of his word. See, but a lot, when a, lot, a lot of people don't like to receive that, so what do they do? They start bringing in their traditions. They start bringing in their philosophies. They start bringing in their ideas. And guess what? You're going to operate in error. You're not going to be able to prove what is that good and acceptable uh, and perfect will of, uh, of God is for you. Because everything God has, he has it designed it and set it forth right here in his word. And if you want to understand how he works, you don't have to go ask anybody. You can prove it for yourself. You will not be operating error. All you have to do is get into God's word. And so Nicodemus was a man. He was a learned man. A man had, he, if, he, if Nicodemus was here today, he would be a man with doctorates and, and uh, masters and bachelors and so forth. But see, Nicodemus had heard about this, this man named Jesus. He had heard about you know, the things that he, were, that he was offering. Nicodemus had heard about that life after death. And see, and Nicodemus not only just heard about it, he acted, he acted upon what he heard. See, so like, you know, when I, was, when I heard about Jesus, I didn't even come at night. I wasn't even interested in hearing anything about him. See, but it's only when you have a desire to come is when God can start to work in your behalf. So, you need to understand once you become born again into that experience, something takes place. Actually, if he says the kingdom of Jesus, Jesus said in Matthew, uh, yeah, Matthew uh, 4, 17, he said, from that time on, Jesus began to preach and to say the kingdom, he says, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah, the the kingdom of God is at hand, but you know what you have to do? You have to make a decision for that new birth experience. Even though it's, it, it's there, he was offering it, and you need to understand what, how you get into the kingdom that Jesus was speaking about. You have to get into it through the new birth experience. See, and it's up to you to make the decision. See, God, he gives the invitation. It's up to you to, to accept or to reject the invitation. Now, Nicodemus, he accepted. He came. He received. And as a, as, as a result of him coming and receiving, then God had an opportunity to work in his life. See, God says all of his promises are yes. So when he says the kingdom of God is at hand, all you had to do is make a decision to say, yes, I received that. And once you are born again, you have rights. Once you're born into the kingdom, it's just like a child. Once he's, the child is born into a family, that child has rights. So that child has just as much rights as the oldest uh, uh, child or the youngest child. And the child is very much a part of that family. But do you know what that child has to do once he was, they bring that child forth in that, in, in that delivery room? That child has to be taught. That child has to be cared for. That child has to grow up. That child has to, to mature. See, and if you do not do those things for that child, that child will wither and that child will die. Well, born, being born again into, that, into, into the kingdom is no different. What has to happen is that that child has to be cared for. The child has to be tutored. The child has to learn who he or she is in that relationship. And once that child knows or finds out who they are, then that child can start acting like the person that God created for that person.